Hello everyone, today's Tomorrow's India team is here to meet Mr. Franz Kassler, a social activist who has been working with the girls of Ranchi, Jharkhand and rescuing them from the clutches of child marriage and human trafficking from the last nine years. So let's meet and welcome Mr. Franz Kassler. So I was, um, when I was doing my, my master's at Boston University, I was, uh, I was extremely lucky. <coughs> um, I was really lucky to be in this program, it was uh, their honors program. And, uh, we were able to uh, we were able to explore a lot of subjects that were kind of uh, new or or not the usual track. So what I really got interested in was trying to find out how <clears throat> how companies and NGOs could work together to try to bring in more innovative ways of of tackling issues of poverty. Uh, so in 2007, I came here to to Gurgaon to work as a consultant at uh, the Confederation of Indian Industry. And that gave me a chance to work with business leaders who were uh, trying to accomplish goals in the, in the social sector. And then after a year and a half of that, I decided to, uh, to uh, you know, leave office life behind. And I moved out to Jharkhand, uh, where I uh, went to work for an NGO there and uh, moved into a, a mud hut with a farmer and shipped in my motorcycle from, uh, from Gurgaon. And um, that was how I started my adventure in, in Jharkhand. So when I was back in the, in the U.S., uh, throughout high school and, and college, uh, every winter I was working as a ski instructor, alpine ski instructor. And um, I was working with boys and girls and occasionally adults and teaching them how to ski. And, and so I had uh, 12 years of, uh, of working with kids uh, you know, under my belt before I came to India. And when I moved out to this village area in Jharkhand, I saw that uh, the lives of boys and girls were completely different. You know, walking through the village, I would see that uh, while boys play, girls work. And girls were always doing something in the service of their own families. So I got, um, I got pretty interested in, in seeing if there was something that we could do for the, for the girls, because obviously they had a you know, tremendous work ethic. Um, I started uh, uh, doing some tuitions at a local government school, and I saw that um, the girls' attendance was much below the boys, but when they did come to, the, you know, to school, they were doing really well. So I started, uh, uh, along with a friend, I started a small scholarship fund and, and we uh, worked with a, a teacher at a government school to, uh, to select some of the most dedicated students and there were, I think, eight, uh, eight in total, five girls and, and three boys. And uh, when I, I went off to New York for, for about five months and decided to come back to Jharkhand, and when I came back, uh, one of the girls who was on the scholarship fund uh, said she wanted to play football. So that was the start of it. Something that I tried to do from the very beginning was to make sure that we had a really positive, uh, you know, type of coaching. And, uh, you know, our, our philosophy in you was that the coach is the guide on the side, not the sage on the stage. And that, um, that the best coach in the world is the game itself. So in, in Jarkin, when I first uh, got into football there and we were going around to tournaments and games, I saw that, um, a lot of the coaches seemed really self-important. Um, a lot of the people who were putting on uh, tournaments, you know, were kind of doing it, you know, for them for themselves, and they like to go and and um, you know play the big man. Where I come from is it's all about the kids, and um, that's really what I want to do because I think that this, you know, the uh, the game can really uh, help to change kids' lives. It it gives the girls confidence, camaraderie, a sense of community, um, and it even gives them some uh, some tools and some life skills. Uh, that can really translate into uh, being, being able to achieve their dreams later on in life. So we, we, we just really focused on, uh, on making um, uh, safe and fun and ins inspiring uh, spaces and, and sessions for the girls. Um, and I think that maybe the reason that that became so popular was that uh, a lot of girls really don't have that, that kind of space. Maybe a lot of boys don't as well, but um, especially the girls uh, really lack uh, these spaces and places to, to come together and, and you know, hang out with their friends in a, in a positive uh, atmosphere. For us, football has always been a way of trying to get girls into school. Um, and once we, once we achieved that, once we achieved really good attendance um, in school, you know, by uh, bringing girls together in, in football and encouraging them to, to go to their schools every day, uh, we saw that the schools that they were going to were, you know, not, not of, the, of the quality that was uh, going to help them to really achieve anything. Um, you know, there was, uh, if you go around to a lot of the schools, either, either the kids are hanging out in the courtyard or 
they're being beaten in the classrooms. And um, of the, you know, the few good schools that we did see, um, it was going to be really difficult for us to get uh, girls from our program into those schools. We might be able to get one or two, but uh, we wouldn't be able to get hundreds. So um, we had before and after school tuitions, but we didn't have the funds to, to build our own school. And um, then I, I met a young woman in, in Mumbai in 2012 who's actually from the US. Um, now she's my wife. But in, in 2012, we didn't know each other. And um, she came back to India in 2013 um, on an academic fellowship. After she came back in, in 2013, she uh, uh, teamed up with Star Sports to create a fundraising campaign. And, and through that campaign, we were able to uh, bring India's first uh, group of, well, first team of, of footballers to the biggest tournament in the US. And uh, we were able to um, have enough left over to hire a bunch of really good teachers uh, from across India and, and a couple from abroad as well. So it was, um, coming up with the school for us was, um, it was never something that I wanted to do from the beginning. Um, but the longer I was, you know, there in, in Jharkhand, the, the more I saw, um, you know, the lack of quality in education, uh, the more we really wanted to create our own school. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, um, I, I can't take much credit for um, how amazing the school is. It's all about the, the teachers that we have. Um, you know, we've, we've got teachers from, uh, from Mumbai and Bangalore, Kolkata. Um, you know, we've got teachers who speak uh, many different languages. We've got, uh, you know, a teacher from, uh, from Yale. Uh, we've had teachers from Harvard and MIT. I mean, they're a absolutely fantastic, um, you know, teachers that we've got. And uh, my wife has done an incredible job of, uh, uh, of you know, bringing in r really good staff from across India and, and a couple from abroad. So that the school, I think watching girls, um, you know, watching the, the journey of girls who I had known for a long time, uh, but, you know, now they were in the school was pretty amazing because um, I'd had to learn Hindi to, you know, communicate with, with these kids. And I just, you know, I, I learned Hindi in a really organic way of, um, you know, you move into a place and nobody speaks your language, you start picking up, you know, little bits. And if you're there long enough, you, you know, you can kind of, you know, speak it pretty well. And, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, the girls who had come into our school were speaking English, like, you know, nearly fluently. And um, I was, you know, incredibly, I was amazed by um, how quickly they were able to pick things up and, and, you know, they just had this dedication and hunger to learn um, and desire to, to do something different in their lives. Um, you know, they've, they had bigger dreams than, than uh, what other people had for them. And this school is really giving them the tools that they need to, um, to get where they want to go. So girls playing football and, and also girls um, just being confident and assertive uh, is something that is, um, uh, you know, it's not uh, normal uh, where, uh, where I'm working. And uh, we got a variety of different responses from, uh, from people in the community and from parents to, to girls, you know, having these kind of transformations. Uh, first, just, you know, the um, being seen to go play football and wearing shorts and, and then later on becoming, you know, confident, assertive young women um, who, you know, were, uh, you know, willing to tell people, you know, what their rights were. Um, and generally what, what I've seen is the, the way people see Yua and the way people see these girls has a lot more to do with how they see themselves than anything else. Um, when you find, um, uh, when you find, you know, men, fathers, brothers who are uh, gainfully employed and, and who feel like they're doing something in their own lives, um, they're, they're pretty positive about uh, their sisters and, and daughters doing something to better their own lives. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, you might find, you know, alcoholic, abusive, um, you know, fathers or brothers who, um, who are unemployed and, and don't have a good perception of themselves. And uh, oftentimes, you know, they try to stand in the way of progress. And they might not, uh, they might be a little jealous or, um, or, you know, just not want to see other people in their family succeed. Um, the, there was a young woman from Jharkhand who I uh, once met who said something really memorable to me. Uh, she was a young journalist and I was talking about this and she said, oh, the crab box. And I said, well, the crab box, what is that? She said, if you put one crab in a box, it can get out. But if you put multiple crabs in, they'll all pull each other back down. 
So I think that that's something that um, the girls in our program have to constantly fight against because they might have, you know, a few positive voices in their life. They've got their teams and, and the confidence that comes from that. But there's a there's generally a tremendous amount of resistance to um, to these girls doing something uh, against a norm, and the norm is getting married at a young age, having a bunch of kids by the time you're 20, and you know perpetuating this cycle of poverty. Uh, society teaches girls to fit in, and you uh, coaches girls to stand out. And uh, some people like it, and some people don't. But we've never met a, a girl who didn't like it. We've our organization has been extremely fortunate in the um, in the partners that that have come on board with us. Um, we've had a, a lot of corporate partners come on board and foundations, and uh, I think that the the main uh, the main drive you know for that kind of awareness has been media attention. Uh, so we've had very positive media attention. Um, the girls from UA have been uh, the first teams ever from uh, from India to compete at the biggest football tournaments in the U.S. and Spain. Um, they've achieved a, a lot, you know, academically. Um, We've got you know one young girl who's uh, going to summer school this this year at Yale, another who's doing a, a U.S. State Department sponsored full year of high school in the U.S. Um, we've had uh, we've got two girls who just came back from a FIFA program in, in Jordan where they set a world record for uh, playing a game at the lowest altitude um, uh, ever. Uh, we've got uh, you know a girl who went to Alaska on a kayaking trip with a group of female scientists to study climate change, and we've got. Girls who are doing all kinds of things, going places where I've never been, and it's um, it's pretty amazing to to see. I, I think it, Microsoft and, and other corporates have um, uh, corporate partners have uh, approached us because they've seen you in the media. They've seen that what the girls are doing. They're seeing um, you know the the tremendous achievements of of these girls who are who are pretty unlikely uh, you know heroes, and um, so Microsoft helped us to. Um, they're helping us to create awareness uh, through um, through uh, uh, media campaigns. They've brought on Marcelo from Real Madrid, uh, who's helping us with um, uh, with generating awareness about a school, our new school that we want to build. Um, he's one of the most famous football players in the world. Uh, Microsoft is, has built a new website for us to really help us to tell the story of of. Um, you know what kind of changes the girls in our program are experiencing, and um, and, um, um, and Microsoft is one. We've had um, um, a, a lot of other organizations too. You know, help us by procuring buses, by helping us to pay for uh, for teacher salaries and fuel and um, and land for our new school and and all kinds of uh, of different things. We've we've got a, a girl named Sita who is uh, pursuing her master's in chemistry, and about maybe eight years ago, um, we were uh, taking a, a short uh, you know, film interview of her and, and we said, what's the difference in your life you know, now that you've joined UA? And she said, before UA I had five or six friends. Uh, now after joining UA I have 50 or 60 friends. And so it, it starts with that. You know, it starts with joining a, a group of, of, um, of your peers and, in a really positive uh, place you know, on a team that's led by, uh, by a fun and positive and, and safe coach. And then through that, they, they gain, you know, this confidence, they gain, gain camaraderie, they get, they get a sense of community that they didn't have before. And in, in that way, that gives us a really good platform to, uh, to engage with them and try to find out what, what their, their goals are. And even before that, just try to help them to think about uh, what their preferences are. So the, the more confident these girls get through um, being part of a, a positive team, uh, the more they start to think about their futures. And you know, none of them want to have the same lives as their mothers because their moms have really, uh, you know, really difficult lives. Um, these girls want to you know, step out of this cycle of poverty. They want to, um, they want to dream big and, and have, uh, have jobs. They want to get married after they uh, you know, become successful in, in whatever way that they see that. Um, and football, football gives them the, the chance to dream about that. Uh, but it's really the school that, that helps them to get the tools that they need to, uh, to enter into a good university, to, um, you, you know, to, to gain the type of education that's going to carry them 
ahead and open up doors in their lives. The way that I see the uh, the way that I see UA growing and, and keeping the kind of quality and impact that we have is, uh, is partly organic and partly directed. And, and the organic part is that every time new coaches come online, every time we've got uh, girls who, um, you know, who kind of um, have played long enough that they're comfortable to coach, um, you know, every time those girls uh, take their training and are ready to coach, there are tons of girls who are ready to join their teams. And we've got teams with um, right now that we're struggling with because they're, you know, 60, uh, 60 players and one girl coach. And so we're trying to bring more girls on, you know, to coach. So there's a huge demand for it. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, uh, the football is important, but, but it's really the school and hopefully schools in the future, which, um, which is really going to help these girls um, to achieve what they want in their lives. So our, right now we're having to find funding to, to build the school and to run the school. But our long-term uh, plan for, uh, for you know, financial sustainability is that uh, the alumni will fund the school. Girls who are in our 10th class and moving on to 11th, they've all pledged that, uh, that after they get a job, they'll sponsor one or two girls in the school. So the, the more, uh, you know, we're going to institutionalize that and the more alumni we have, at the point where we have more alumni than students, the school will be completely uh, you know, self-sufficient. We won't have to uh, find any external funding, and I think that that's that's really the way you know it should be. If you've if you've benefited so much from something, you know, it's time to give back. And and these girls, you know, they're not even waiting to give back. So many of them, you know, give back right now with their their coaching. Some of them are paying school fees for their younger sisters, um, and um, um, you know that's uh, something that. Um, that I struggle with, and I know that you know our other staff you know struggle with, is that um, you know we're working with 400 uh, you know girls in a state with 30 million people, you know a state with the population of Canada, you know three times the population of Sweden. So <clears throat> we've we've decided to uh, to keep our growth you know manageable and organic because we want to make sure that that the girls in our program are getting uh, really safe experiences and. And child safeguarding is, is one of our key focuses. And so instead of going out and just finding a bunch of guys from the village to, you know, run girls uh, football teams, uh, we found that it's, it's much, you know, better in the long term, and also much better for for the girls to have role models who are uh, who are young women who've come through the program. Uh, for me, uh, ever since I was young, having having positive role models and, and mentors has been really important for me. And um, for, for me to be part of, uh, you know, part of Tomorrow's India and this iHero Award, uh, I see it as a chance to, um, to share what I've done uh, and what, you know, what my colleagues have done, um, and most of my colleagues are from India, uh, with young people in India, uh, in hopes that, um, and that we can get over this kind of thinking that, uh, that when I'm rich, I'll give back to you know, society. You don't have to do that. I think oftentimes, uh, you know, when you're a teenager, when you're in your 20s, you're, you're much more capable of connecting with young people and being a mentor uh, than, than when you're older. Um, and, um, and I think that, um, you know, the, the more we can showcase uh, people all around India doing, uh, you know, working with, working with youth, trying to, trying to find ways of, of mentoring young people, um, we can show that it's easy. It's, you know, it's, it's not rocket science. It's not super hard. It doesn't take a, a whole lot of time. Um, you know, you, you can find some kids in your community and you can find some kids in your community. You can, you know, set up a, you know, free tuitions for them or, or low cost tuitions. Uh, you see a group of, of girls or boys playing uh, football or cricket and you can say, uh, you know, hey, can I, <clears throat> can I join you? And, you know, maybe they need a coach, maybe they need a place to play. And so there are all kinds of ways that, um, you know, that, uh, that instead of just walking past uh, groups of, of you know, young kids who've got huge amounts of potential, you can stop and, and, uh, and talk to them and, and befriend them and, and start working with them. When I tell my parents about, you know, what I'm doing in UA, the, the biggest surprise for them is not that I'm living really far away or, or doing something, you know, a bit different track. I think the, their biggest uh, surprise is that I'm able to wake up at four or five o'clock in the morning to, uh, you know, to go and, and coach football. And thankfully, um, you know, thankfully I'm, I'm not having to do a lot of that anymore, but I did that for many years. And, um, 
I've, my interests outside of UA um, are usually uh, sports and, and uh, trying to find solitude because you know, where I live, you know, I, I essentially live in a school full of you know, 100 kids where we've got you know, 300 kids you know, coming by every day. And um, I like to go trekking and, and camping and, uh, and there's a nearby uh, dam, a reservoir where I like to go kayaking. So usually I like to go off by myself and, and do something alone or, or with my wife and, and, um, and just, uh, you know, try to, um, you know, try to, try to get that feeling of, of having, you know, uh, of having like achieved exhaustion through, uh, some kind of sports. So the, the theme of, of tomorrow's India is, is let's start with I. And, uh, to me that means that, you know, let's, let's cut out the excuses for all the reasons that we have for, for not, uh, you know, doing something and, and just saying like, you know, my, my friends might not be doing it, but I'm going to start doing this. And in, in that way, um, you know, what we're doing and what so many other NGOs in, in India are doing uh, will, will really start to spread. Tomorrow's India, let's start with I.